Hey, what's good, everybody? Once again, back at it again with another Falcon and the Winter Soldier review from the Night Shift Bandits. It's your favorite bandits here. I'm Zach. Thomas here. Hell yeah. And, you know, this episode, I think you said it, Thomas, it was one of those episodes. <laughs> this, this episode was one of those episodes that, that was like, hey, this should be a PSA. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> For for some people, they already know what's going on, and and they understand. Other people probably just ignored all that information, and <laughs> they're getting it thrown in their face again. Right. So it's one of those things where, okay, I, I'm just gonna say this to start off. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know a lot of people may be mad about that in particular, but my thing is that this is Captain America. And he always tackled social issues and political issues. Mm-hmm. Hell, even when a soldier did it, it's just that that was something that we all agreed on. <laughs> exactly. So, but I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like for, for me, it's just, it's said constantly and constantly. And mm-hmm. uh, it, the story has been told. And like I said, it's just been, you know, suppressed because it's not a. Mm-hmm. story the country wants to actually acknowledge yeah and the, the parallels from the scene with uh isaiah bradley was just like mm-hmm. it, it hit really close to home yeah and the thing is in the thing with I, the whole situation with isaiah bradley is the fact that when you it actually spun how can i say this it actually intertwined in with actual history efforts with, of course with the, the tuskegee experiments and all that happened um if you don't know what that is just go ahead and look it up mm-hmm. that's some history right there <laughs> that, that is a that's, lot of history and a lot of history that that's one of the main reasons why a lot of black people nowadays still don't want to go to a doctor mm, so don't want to go to a doctor let alone take the vaccine that's going around right now exactly um, so it, it just brings on a lot of like emotion a lot of information and it has like a lot of uh, backdrop in it so yep. um, it, it was it, it was really tough to watch but at the same time it was necessary true true that true that and in in regards to Isaiah Bradley since pretty much since we're on this subject right now um, I might as well just hop into that scene in that conversation. Um, I did like the conversation between him and uh, Sam. Mostly yeah. because you're seeing how a black Captain America was indeed treated in, throughout history throughout the United States. Granted, yeah, the United States is a much... How can I say this? It's a much different place than it is now than it was back then. And it may have gotten slightly better when treating black people. But all in all, you know, racism still exists, sexism still exists, yeah. all that stuff still exists, obviously. Right. But, and I, I definitely agree. Mm-hmm. And Sam, however, mm-hmm. I, I think I do agree with him, too. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's not a, oh, I should be ashamed or yeah. uh, don't take pride in myself as a black man for wanting to be Captain America. Yeah. But... And these times, like, I, he understands where Isaiah is coming from because oh, yeah. he had to go through a lot more bullshit than mm-hmm. Sam had to. And it's because of Isaiah that Sam can be Captain America. And right. I don't think that Isaiah understands that because, mm-hmm. you know, times do change. And as Sam said, this is a new age. Like, right. people are probably more accepting of it, which, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, I think it's more people accepting of it than not. Because most people yeah. just don't give a fuck. They're like, oh, okay, that's cool. We gotta do Captain America. While some people are like, um, yeah, no, you can't be black, blah, blah, blah. And again, not just trying to point anyone out. just saying that's what, you know, you kind of see. That goes around. Um, exactly. But, all in all, um, it seemed like Isaiah, for good reason, actually. I'm not blaming him. He did not like the shield he did not want to see it he does not even want to be reminded of that time um, well it it brings back a lot of trauma for him because exactly it's, it's a it's a memory of 
I was doing something great and they didn't let me be great. Exactly. Just because of the color of my skin. Exactly. And to just bring it on, I guess you can call it a macro level. Um, once again, we see another vet not being treated right. like they should. Yep. Exactly. Like, they completely disown, disavowed them, disowned yeah. them, mm-hmm. and then, and like, had them in captivity. Right, exactly. And you put them in jail for 30 years. Hey, you were in one of our wars. Hey, go to jail for 30 years. Yeah, you, like, you saved a bunch of people who we wanted to keep secret. We were just going to wipe them out, but you brought them back and we didn't have to even go through that. You go beat, to jail for 30 years. You beat the Winter Soldier. One of the most strongest soldiers in all of history. Go to jail for 30 years. Oh, and let's also experiment on you. Exactly. And as as he said, it was more than just the U.S. government. It was Hydra as well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That that would be to uh, expect it in that world because Hydra would eventually trade with the United States government. Exactly. So definitely to be to be expected and understood because, as we know in Winter Soldier, fucking <laughs> Hydra was within Shield, so I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if you know they had a lot a shit ton of access. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Hy- Hydra actually wrote the Sokovia Accords. I wouldn't be surprised either, but that came after. So, well, hell, Hydra still bits and pieces of Hydra are still active as we know, so I yeah. can't say that. Yeah, exactly. So they. It could happen. Like I, I never disavow those type of uh, organizations. Yeah, bro, I'm still waiting for AIM. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I cannot wait until AIM comes back. Comes yeah, up. I'm waiting for AIM to come through. They teased us with it in Iron Man three, mm-hmm. and ooh, I was really irritated at that. Hell, I they wanted them to show up. Hell, they teased us with it in Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield was literally like, yeah, they used to exist. Like, they literally oh. mentioned AIM in a speech. I was like, yeah, these organizations, yeah, in the past they did evil. Like, wait, what? You can't just go past AIM. What? <laughs> it, it's world building at that point. Everyone knows about it. It happened. Just move past it. But yeah, sorry, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. isn't canon no more. So, sorry. I, I, you know what? There was always a reason why I thought that I didn't watch that show. Mm-hmm. And I think that was it. I, I always kind of figured it's not going to be canon. It, Somehow, I knew it just wasn't going to be canon. To go on this tangent for a bit, they were trying in like the first two seasons. Mm-hmm. But I think what it turned into, which probably hurt the writers as well, is the fact that you were just writing shows and then you had to mention what happened in the movies. Yeah. So, it was more of an afterthought for everything that's happening in the cinematic universe, not incorporated into its very being. Exactly. So, well, two things. For one, when the situation with uh, the winner, when the Winter Soldier movie happened, that's when Shield got really good. Because if you were keeping up with the first season, at least the first half of the first season, you developed like uh, you start to care for certain characters. Then you found out certain characters were evil, and to me, that actually produced one of Marvel's best villains in the MCU. Okay. So, uh, fuck it. You're not gonna watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? I'm probably not. It's I've already watched the first season. Okay. So, uh, I, I do understand where you're coming from. And it oh, yeah, okay. Did, it did start off like that. Yeah. And I did, like, check in on some later seasons, just watch an episode here and there, uh, just randomly with friends or something. And mm-hmm. a lot of the times, it just didn't feel like it was going along the same path as the MCU. Yeah. Especially with the eternal stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, you mean the Inhumans? Or did they touch yeah, the Inhumans? Inhumans. Okay. Yeah. I was like, wait, I didn't watch that season. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that. The the Inhumans, yeah. It was like, okay, they could be good, and then mm-hmm. they dropped the ball entirely. Yeah. And, well, in my, in my opinion, like, once they moved away from the movie stuff, that's when it started getting really good. Um, yeah. Like, for instance, like, I fucking, I mentioned his name, spoilers for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but when Ward actually became, you found out he was a part of Hydra, and the reason why he was a part of Hydra, it was like, oh shit. Then, why come was the, he a part of Hydra? Because they adopted Green. him. Oh, they adopted okay, him. So, yeah. So okay, 
so real quick before because we got to get back on, on yeah, yeah, yeah but real quick before that i did see ward the very first thing that i saw what that i said when i saw ward was he's going to be a traitor <laughs> and guess what <laughs> he was a traitor and again in my opinion one of the best villains that they've had in a long time <clears throat> but i it, i just find it very funny that I knew he was going to be a villain from mm-hmm. the start. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Let, let's get back into the episode because there was a lot of heavy stuff that we just went over. And yeah. the rest of the episode was pretty light. Especially, yes. you know, that first fight scene. Yo, that first fight scene was dope. And oh, again, I know I harp on Sam, but to be real. <laughs> Yo, this is his show. Like. <sighs> You're supposed to harp on him on this one, and uh, I almost called him by his actor's name, Sebastian Sand. Uh, <laughs> Bucky. Yeah, I know, but like, it's it's their show. It, they're supposed to be the ones that you, you harp on about. They're they're the ones that are driving this whole thing. My thing is this: Can Sam have like at least one good fight scene? I feel like he did have a decent fight scene on there. He was fighting a super soldier as a non-powered human. I get it. I get it. But hey, in Injustice, you could be Batman literally punching Superman. So the, I, I can't take no excuses. Okay. In the Injustice <laughs> universe, Batman also took a bunch of stuff that made him about as strong as the Kryptonian. Yeah, but you know, they just wrote that in there. Be like, oh, uh, yeah, we got to make this make sense. They wrote that in there. They absolutely <laughs> did. I, I, no question. They needed some reason to be like, I want, I want Batman to punch Superman, but... I want it to hurt him. So... <laughs> Superman <Yeah>. pills. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I got one for you. Krillin fight beating uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, never. <laughs> never will that happen. And I love Krillin. <laughs> But never will that happen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but but yeah, I mean, like, I, I I just want this guy to have like a good. I just I guess I just want him to have a fight scene where he's just on top constantly. Um, like this next episode. I hope so. Like, if he still gets beat, something like, okay, bro, come on. <laughs> well, okay, think about this though. Mm-hmm. He was fighting a super soldier with another super soldier. Yeah who has a mechanical arm mm-hmm. the super soldier that those two were fighting had his arm broken because of their scene work yeah and he's not powered which was badass yeah and he used his wings as like an extension of his body like right. those were him right like he knew exactly how to move and how to maneuver a lot of things and he took some uh took an idea from uh Peter. Mm-hmm. Wrapping the shield up. Trying <laughs> to uh, get it away from him. Yeah. No, I understood. It's it's like that that fight scene got super brutal. Like I wasn't expecting it to be brutal. I don't know if it's because it's a TV show now or what. But they made some brutal hits in this fight scene. Especially like you said with the arm snap off. Um, pretty much fucking <laughs> John ripping yeah. his wings off. Yeah, him, him ripping uh, Sam's wing off was like, wow. Yeah. And then said we could have been partners. <laughs> like, bro, you the entire time he was trying to work with you, and you were just against him. Exactly. Well, no. So, to be honest. To be honest, and I will point this out consistently, John tried to be cool with them. They were just douchebags. They were a little right. bit douchey. Uh, okay, when you say a little bit, that, I'm, that's, hmm? that's that's hyperbole, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because they were especially douchey. They were really dumb. I'm like, why are you being so mean to this guy who's just trying to help you all? I'm sorry. You yeah. have to point that out. Like, he's just trying to be chill with you guys. Like, he respects he the does. legacy. Yeah. He does respect the legacy, but yeah. they also knew that person and worked with him a lot. 
Bucky knew him before he was Cap. Yeah. And that was almost 100 years ago. Yeah. So it's like you respect the legacy and everything. So why are they being douchey to him? But anyway, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's fine. It's fine. He's evil um, now, so it's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, let's let's go on then. And uh, talk about the Contessa de Fontaine. Yes. So... Um, as we talked about off mic, mm-hmm. neither of us really know too much about her. Mm-hmm. What we do know is that she works for Shield. She was also Madame Hydra. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I know about her is that she is Agent Fourteen. I don't know much of what Agent Fourteen has accomplished, but <laughs> if she works that high up in Hydra, where she can talk to Nick mm-hmm. Fury freely. Mm-hmm. She must be a badass, a real badass, actually. So and, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really interested in where they're going to take her. Me too. And I won't. And I heard a spoiler about her, unfortunately. Uh, but I won't say it here. Okay. But you know, it's it's not a major spoiler, but it's something I'm like, ah, oh, that would have been a great surprise. But whatever. Okay. Um, but. I will say, you can tell the significance of a character if they have on, like, a special kind of suit or clothing or something like that. Because the way that camera was shot at her boots, those boots look pretty special. (laughs) Phenomenal. I was like, yo, who is this that they're about to show? Right. Oh, like, I, I saw the character and I was like, is this the Contessa or is this someone from... Or uh, I thought she might have been a Viper at first. A Viper? I mean, they yeah. could. I mean, at this point, they could do the Sex Society, couldn't they? Yeah, they the Serpent could. Society. Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Them, them, like having her go ahead and just basically come, but she literally sat in between him and his wife, and then said, "Hey." It's a one of the smart th- like the two smart things that you did was marry her and pick up the phone when I call you. Exactly, with this um, business card that's blank. Yeah, because I'm like, okay, what's really going on? And I doubt they'll really answer the question next uh, episode because th- it seems like this is going to be like a big reveal that they're building up to something. Oh, I think so too. Yeah, so it's not like it'll be. You know, yeah, it'll, it'll, um, yeah, it, it's not like it'll be like answered immediately. It's, I don't think so. Oh, this, this isn't something that I think is going to be answered immediately either. I think it's going to be something much later on, like mm-hmm. who was actually in control for WandaVision. Like they say it was uh, Agatha, but mm-hmm. no, there was still something else at work there, and we don't know what it was. Exactly, exactly. So, so we're just, we're just, it's going to be brought up later. So we're just going to go ahead and blame Elaine from Seinfeld. Yeah. Have to crowbar that. Or, uh, <laughs> or, or what's her name from Veep? Exactly. <laughs> Actually, let's uh, go down the whole list and just say every character she's ever played. Just cut that off right there. Yeah, uh, Selena Mayer <laughs> from Veep. Yep. Liz so, Lemon from 30 Rock. I, I also I forgot she was on there. <laughs> okay, so I also think that it was very unrealistic that uh, U.S. agent's wife would sit there while another woman just came and sat between them and just started talking, completely ignoring her. I, I don't see that that scene happening how it went. Yeah, no, and me neither. I, me neither, especially if she's black. She's not going to be like, wait, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, no. Like, who the fuck are you? Why are you sitting here between me and my husband while we having a private conversation? Like, <laughs> and then the whole disrespectfulness of it, just yeah. ridiculous. Absolutely disrespectful. It would not have happened like that. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, another thing that, uh, that happened in the show, mm-hmm. um, I really, really want to know this because mm-hmm. there's always been a... A, a very good continuity and about the entire world and how it works, very similar to ours. Mm-hmm. How did Carly get in New York? 
Why do you have to ask questions, Thomas? Why must I you mean, ask questions? This is during a time where they're not letting in. Uh, uh, wow, why can I not remember the word right now? <laughs> Superpower like, people? No, 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 no. Uh, refugees. Refugees. Ah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not letting in refugees. And she's clearly a refugee. And she's just let into New York. I mean, I'm sure she has connections. Oh, yeah. Because they already yeah. implied that a lot of people are on the Flag Smasher's side. Like, a lot yeah. of people. I, I mean, that's very... With that whole park scene. Mm-hmm. And how she just, you know basically did a bird whistle and everyone was like oh it's time to do stuff cool yeah and it seemed very mind controlly it kind of did i i thought i'm glad i wasn't the only one that actually that noticed that and I, I, I looked at a couple of other uh reaction videos and no one said that either and for me i don't know if it's the same for you for me it's the way that they got up it was like, okay, they stood straight up. They didn't really turn around immediately. They just slowly like turned around, I guess, when she got done with her scene, and they walked very slowly towards her. Yeah. That's why I'm yeah. like, did she find like a device to mind control these people or something? I don't know. For me, it was when she did the whistle, mm-hmm. and pretty much everybody in the area stopped everything they were doing yes looked over at her mm-hmm. and then started walking slowly like they were being mind controlled right so i'm like i'm just sitting here i'm like did it's just like a weird uh director instruction or what like what's going on like i think it might either be a weird director instruction or she told them to do some uh <laughs> some weird shit <laughs> So yeah. Oh no no yeah she she just threw together a flash mob that's what it was. <laughs> like guys, when I whistle, I need it for all of you to stand up at the same time and walk towards me. Like when I whistle, everyone look at me, stand up simultaneously, and then walk towards me. Yes. Slowly, slowly. Very so it looks slowly. weird. Yes, with your <laughs> eyes wide open. Yep. No one blink. <laughs> It, it was it was so awkward like that that one part it was just it was just weird and I yeah. am, I'm just really glad to know that someone else thought oh this might be my control yeah yeah it's it's just so I, I it just looked weird to me um, yeah. but hey this episode was not about Carly <laughs> she only no. got that one scene and that was it I think that, that was that was about it um, yeah. oh yeah Zemo had had a scene in here too. Oh yeah, which is the best scene in my mind. Which is my favorite for this episode, actually. First of all, Ao was there, and of course, Ao, she is dope. She is dope as fuck. Um, so, mm-hmm. go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, talk about Adora, who's pretty much well known, but not really. You see her in the background of every, almost almost every Marvel movie that features Adora Milaje, but yeah. no one really knew her name until this series. Yeah, she was. Of that famous scene between Okoye and uh, Black Widow. Exactly. So Sitting in the background. No. Nobody knows her. No, wait. I thought she was the one Black oh, Widow no, no, was talking to. She was the one. Yeah. She was the one. That's Okoye what... was there and was just like looking on. That's what it was. Was Okoye there? Maybe. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I, I'm thinking it was. Oh, no, no. I am remembering it wrong because I'm remembering a commercial. Because I will I'm say. Because I will say, Ayo is becoming my favorite Dora. Like, oh, she yeah. is becoming my favorite Dora Milaje. And I'm Because she's just so bad at it. Like, she takes no shit. None. Like, like at all. Like, she takes no shit at all. I'm like, yeah, okay. She, she's, one of the, she's one of the best. Like, so, I, I like you. Yeah. I, I think she's uh, one of the higher in command. Mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure about that. I, I haven't done any research to look that up at all. But yeah, me neither. Going by how much importance that they are kind of pushing onto her, it, it seems like she's pretty high in the door, Milaje. Yeah, which is a good thing. Um, which I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if they just came out and say, "Oh, she's second in command." Like, oh, okay, that would explain totally everything. Wouldn't be, yeah, I'm like, oh, she's always been the second in command. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right, she's always been there. That's why she's always there. <laughs> yeah, 
all right cool um, so mm-hmm. what what else what else happened in this episode because oh right 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 they yeah. they get they got the boat fixed oh we didn't finish talking about zemo Oh, right, 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 Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, like, um, so, again, the reason why this is my favorite scene is because you see Zemo at the Soko- at Sokovia's uh, memorial, right? Just looking at the monument, and then you're reminded that, like, okay, hey, at the end of the day, he's still in pain. You know, he's yeah. still hurting. Like, despite all of his sarcasm, his manipulation, his dancing, he's still a sad man inside, you know? Yeah. So... It's like you see him looking at the memorial and then Bucky walks up to him, talk to him. And long story short, Bucky points a gun at him. And he's about to accept his death, which, again, to remind you, he was about to kill himself at the end of Civil War. So it's like he was ready to die. And it actually brought up a question that, like, is he always ready to die? Is he in a constant state of just, I just want to die? Like, suicidal? It could be that he's suicidal, and it could be because he realizes that he cannot stop all these superpowered people from existing. That's true. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, these things that that you hate are in the world now. Mm -hmm. But who knows? To be real with you, we're starting to see a lot of people get frustrated with superpowered people right now. Especially after WandaVision. I, I mean... Much before WandaVision, I would have been that. Yeah. If I did, if I didn't actually understand like where they were coming from, because no one's ever had powers before these people. Mm-hmm. Not that we. Yeah, yeah. That we've known about. So mm-hmm. now that we see that these people have powers, why not like set up programs to help them learn how to use their powers responsibly? Oh, you mean like that school in Manchester? Yeah. You know that that one school way out there in Manchester. Name, name, yeah, in Manchester, name, named after some ball dude. <laughs> some ball guy, yeah, Patrick yeah. Stewart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the school of Patrick Stewart. Um, oh man! But anyway, um, but yeah, no, I agree, and I think there's just slowly but surely creeping into the whole mutant hatred thing, which I think is going to be for all power, superpowered people, to be real. At least in yeah, this universe. I, I think in this universe, it is going to be more towards anyone who has powers, so yeah. anyone whose DNA is altered to give them some powers in some sort of way. Or oh, agreed. Or something like that. Um, I, I think that when they do Sentinels, mm-hmm. the Sentinels will be going after everyone, Yeah, and Spider-Man is going to be one of the first that's going to be Confused for me. Yep, 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 yep. Hell, he's already hated right now. Oh so. yeah, but that's for for other reasons that he could have entirely avoided by not giving away a pair of sunglasses to somebody you just met. Yeah, congratulations, Spidey. Congratulations. I mean, yeah, he's sixteen, but um, that was dumb. Dumb as shit. And there was like the most. Are they like the most powerful sunglasses in all of existence? And you give to some dude who you shared yeah. a, who you shared a fake beer with. Yep. Honestly, I would have given him the fury before I would have given him to him. And honestly, I wouldn't have given him away. Right. I wouldn't have given him away either. You know, you know what? If I was going to give him to anyone, I probably would have given him the happy. Yes. Give it to somebody who you already know and already trust, not someone you just met. Exactly. I would be oh. like, hey, have, hold on to these. Give them to me when you think I'm ready. Yeah, but look, at least he cleaned up the mess, so it's fine. He cleaned it up, so it's good. It's but good. uh, yeah, uh, I think that's that's pretty much everything that. Oh yeah, no, no, we didn't talk about the boat getting fixed. Oh, I still didn't finish with Zemo. <laughs> I still didn't finish with Zemo. Okay, my bad. <laughs> it's we fine. Keep going on tangents, and, and yeah, okay, it's fine. Okay, well, uh, last thing about Zemo, um, it was cool when like when when Bucky was about to shoot the guy and he dropped the bullet and was like, "Nah, you're gonna live," and. Just turn him into the door of Malaje. Oh, right. I'm wondering why they decided to take him to the raft instead of back I, to Wakanda. I was just going to fucking say, why did they take him to the raft? <laughs> yeah, that, that does not seem... Well, it could be because Wakanda's borders are now open. Mm-hmm. So now they have to abide by UN treaties. 
something Thank about you. that. I, I I just feel like that's not Wakanda. <laughs> oh no, I, I feel like it's not Wakanda either because, hey, they own like ninety nine point nine. Actually, they own a hundred percent of the vibranium on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Right. So, and like, I mean, do they own the raft now? Because Shield is gone, right? So shield is gone. It could be that the Wakandans did take over the raft to keep maintenance going. Yeah. And you know, strengthen it. So it could be that they could also be working with uh some other organization that's not the government mm -hmm. to keep the raft afloat. Mhm. Mm Maybe cuz Pop Pepper is in, in control of Stark Industries. Yeah, so maybe she's like heading up a lot of other companies along with Goop. Yeah. So it, it's entirely possible. Exactly. Shout but outs I'm, to. Shout out. I was going to say shout outs to her vagina candles. Um, so, <laughs> if you don't know wow. what I'm talking about, look up the company Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, involvement with that company. Yeah, please, please do. Um, <laughs> I have not bought one of those candles and I, I don't plan on it. Same thing, same thing for you, Erica Badu. Same thing for you. Uh, it, it, I don't know. Maybe one of those. Maybe maybe you one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you called it, actually. Um, remember when you said that technically the shield belongs to Wakanda? Yeah. Didn't... Uh, fuck it. Uh, I don't remember her name. That didn't Contessa. That. Just call her Contessa. Contessa. Yeah, so when Contessa was uh talking to john about the shield she was like oh you don't have to give it back it's a bit of a gray area as to who owns yeah. it exactly because yeah. I, I thought there was a little bit of vibranium mixed in there yeah uh because adamantium isn't invented in this world so they had to use what they what they could and yeah. what they could was vibranium mm -hmm. uh Vibranium is owned by the Wakandans, but everything else for the shield was owned by Howard Stark. Right. Including the design of the shield. Right. Um, Howard Stark gave the shield to Captain America. Mm -hmm. The government tried to buy it. He said no. And just was <laughs> like, Steve, this is yours. Technically, it belongs to Steve, mm -hmm. who gave it to Sam. So it's Sam's. Exactly. So it's Sam. So it's like, yeah, that's the gray area because they were like, oh, give us the shield back immediately. And it's like, no, it's a bit of a gray area as to who actually owns it. They just like to pretend to think they own it. Yeah, the government thinks they own it because it has their colors on it. it, it, it it's gang activity, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, yeah. But yeah. OK, so go on to your boat. <laughs> I, I really like the boat scene. Oh, wait, I didn't finish Zemo's scene. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with, with the boat scene, yeah. um, I, I find it very interesting how they brought it all the way up to this point where this entire time they are helping out the community while trying to save themselves. And all of a sudden, Sam's just like, let's just ask the community to help us. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that was dope as hell actually i'm not even gonna lie to you about that it was nice to see everybody come together yeah for a heartwarming moment to get the boat fixed really and was. to help them out because they were literally like yo you know our parents were dope and hell we could probably call in a few favors which they did yep like you heard the montage of voices saying like hey you guys are the wilsons right anything for you guys blah 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 so it was cool there was one dude he called and he was like, "Hey, what up, Falcon? You know that that's that's how black people interact with each other. Like, if I knew somebody, like if I knew ASAP Rocky, I wouldn't go up and call him by his real name. No, I'd go up like, "Yo, what up, ASAP? Or what's up, Rocky? What up? You know, I'm not gonna do no, no. Right, exactly. Like, hey, what's up? Uh, see, I would be ignorant and just call him Black Falcon. Right, I would." I would have. He would have called me and be like, "Hey, this is Sam Wilson." Be like, oh, what up, Black Falcon? What up, bro? <laughs> right? What up, bro? What you want? What up, Black Falcon? Hey, is that Black Widow over there? Wait, she's not black. Never mind. 
What, what, whoa, I could I could imagine that conversation. Hey, why do they call her Black Widow and she is Russian? <laughs> like, wait a sec, you can't have that title. You're just Widow. Like, isn't yeah. that cool? But but they did answer that question kind of before. Oh with yeah. That little kid in that conversation. So yeah, they took care of that. Um, and along with everyone in the community coming and helping out. And you seeing that montage of people saying, "Hey, no, y'all mm-hmm. helped us out all the time, so yeah, we can do whatever you whatever you need." Yeah. And then Bucky shows up. And then Bucky's like, "Hey, I'm here to help too." Whoa, is that your sister? She, no, ooh, hello, hi, I'm Bucky. How are you? No, 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 no. You you have to say this right. <laughs> she was like, "Hey, I'm Sarah." Uh, blah 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 blah. And he was like, "Hey," and then walked off. <laughs> And she was still like, <laughs> and after Sam came back and was like, "Hey, stay with us," and she was like, "Oh, okay, okay, cool. He gonna stay with us." Hi, I'm Bucky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm Bucky. All right. Hey, yep. have you ever dated a guy with a metal arm? <laughs> uh, she's gonna find out. She's gonna find out what that metal arm do. Yep. That sweet sacrifice. What that arm do? <laughs> 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 Let me attach you up. No, can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> right. So, anyway. Again, the, again, if you're familiar with Sweet Sacrifice from Devil May Cry, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but um, I, I, I do also like that they had uh, Sam's nephews playing with the shield. And yeah. Bucky was sleeping on the couch and not the floor. Yeah, which is good. Which shows character development. Um... Real quick, because I know we don't have too much time left. Okay. I did like the fact that uh, Sam was uh, practicing that practice montage. And I even created my out. yeah, and I even created my own montage music for that. Nice. Yeah. Please, please cut that in. Please, please, like put that up on here somewhere. I mean, it's me singing it, so I don't know <laughs> if I want to. Fuck it, I'll do it. Well, fuck whatever. I, I, we'll talk about that later. I, I got an <laughs> idea for that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, but, but I do like that montage scene and mm-hmm. the fact that uh, he and Bucky were just basically playing catch and yeah. having like yes! a heart to heart conversation. I was gonna, I'm glad you pointed that out because I was going to point that out too because at least one of the person I was listening to mentioned that, that they were playing catch with the, with the shields. Yeah, I, I thought that first and then heard it on a couple other people oh, okay. watch and yeah so I think everyone's noticed that it was just like a great heart to heart it was and something Bucky needed to hear mm-hmm. um, and again another scene that's showing that hey Sam should be Captain America yep and I won't lie I guess they had to put all of the all of his Captain America moments in this one episode because like oh shit we've got to show why he should be Cap <laughs> yeah I-, I feel like they were going through and actually, no. I think they were showing us why he needs to be capped with him mm-hmm. getting beat throughout this entire episode. Oh, yeah. Remember, remember how uh, Steve Rogers was before he took the serum? Right. True, true. Always getting in the fights that he couldn't win, trying to help people. Mm-hmm. This is what Sam was doing this yep. entire time. So it makes sense that, you know, it took this long for him to get the, the shield and everything. Yeah. Yep, yep, so, yep. I, I'm, I'm, I cannot wait to see this suit. I want to see what they did with the suit and how mm-hmm. they tailored it to look like the comic book. Yeah, same here. Like, I'm really ready to see this suit. Like, I really want to see how it looks. I hope it looks super duper cool. Like, yeah. you can already tell it's going to be bad fucking ass. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping he has vibranium wings. Oh, yeah. You already know he's going to have vibranium. Bro, that whole thing is about to be made up out of vibranium. Right? I, I think he's going to have, like, a necklace or it's gonna be in his dog tag so all he has to do is like tap his dog tags and then like the suit comes out over him bleeding edge style hell yeah that would be dope as fuck that would redeem yeah. Falcon for me if he has that it, it would be absolutely amazing but yeah. I'm not sure if they, they did that although that was the favor that uh Bucky called in for Wakanda exactly so that's gonna be cool so in the next next episode it's just gonna be a showdown. Oh wait, that means wait. Hmm? 
Did you see the end credit scene? Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. U.S. agent making his shield. Hell yeah, U.S. agent. At, after melting down his medal of honor, after being discharged. Oh shit! That uh, is another thing I want to talk. That is another thing I want to talk about. Um, we can get that in real quick. Yeah. So, with uh, in regards to John, obviously, he's a soldier who put in. The, the work, followed every instruction, got every medal he could, and they still screwed him up, and I even pulled in a favor. Yep. So, it's like, take all that pain, that betrayal, and I guess that with the super soldier serum, and he just he goes crazy, he snaps, and at this point, he's like, okay, I don't have the shield no more, let me make my own, let me put my medal on here, let me show them why I should be Captain America. That's basically what happened with mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. I, I I can't say it any other way. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and the thing is, you know, I, I talk a lot about like vets and everything and them being treated right, mostly because my brother is in the Navy, and yeah. it's like I wish this country would treat him like that. Um, oh this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not. No, 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 no. They are gonna treat him very well. What you say? Yeah. No, no, no. I was I was letting you go ahead and talk. Yeah, so I'm just going, it's just interesting to see how he just, he said it too. I did everything you said, and you still do this to me? Okay, all right. So Mm -hmm. that can kind of link back to like Isaiah. Mm -hmm. The whole 30 years, we've already discussed Isaiah, but there is that similarity right there between Mm -hmm. him and this new cap, which is very funny because the it, it seems like the exact opposite of what Isaiah is saying mm-hmm. is coming true. Exactly. A black man is going to be Captain America and mm-hmm. the white man that they put in the place for Captain America has shown why everything needs to change. Exactly. And even then it's like, what it says to me at least what I interpret it as it's not about your race, your creed or whatever you want to call it religion i what political ideologies it's about that shield is about protecting what america is supposed to stand for and its people you know right so it doesn't matter like again because they put a white man in there it doesn't matter because he's still gone crazy so why can't it be a black guy asian dude like you know what i mean like it's supposed to be that shield represents actual legacy yeah yeah no i i completely agree with you on that Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's that's exactly what I was meaning by what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I was just expanding upon it. No, not oh, trying okay, to okay. disagree. Yeah, I wasn't. No, I, just, I I I got what you were saying. Okay, like, okay. But yeah. yeah, that that's that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. I can't I can't really. I really can't wait until this next episode. Me not too. only because it's the finale, but I feel like a lot of a lot of things are going to happen. There's going to be another fight scene because there's always. A fight scene. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm not sure how long this fight scene is going to be, but since this is the finale, it's going to probably be like half the episode, like WandaVision. Yeah, I was going to say, let's just be the whole episode. We got all of explaining out the way. The pieces are where they're supposed to be. Let's just let them fight. Yeah, and I do like the, the training montage that they put in, too, for Sam. It's the training montage. Yeah, that, that was nice to see. I'm kind of kind of mad they didn't throw any 80s music going over it, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we'll fix that. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, yeah that, that's, that's pretty much all I got. Same here. That's all I got. So, hey, Thomas. Yeah. Do you like we social have, media? I, I do. What, <laughs> what, what do you have on social media for us? Well, you can check out the Night Shift Bandits on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Where we post a lot of stuff, a lot of memes, and a lot of reviews. Uh, hit us up wherever you find your podcast. And we're at this point, I'm we're on everything. <laughs> yeah, so just you'll find us. You'll just find type in perspective discussions, the night shift bandits. Oh no, just the night shift bandits, actually. Just the night shift bandits. Oh, okay. Yes, Sorry. Yes. I didn't know that changed. Oh yeah. I oh, I didn't tell you guys that? Shit. Anyway. But yeah, oh, well. <laughs> oh yeah, oh but yeah, the night shift bandits. Um, but if you do want to check out 
relationship stuff, check out Perspectives Discussions, where we talk about relationships and or uh, the culture. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube is pending for that as well. Okay, and again, uh, I'm on that sometime, so yeah. I'll see you over there. Exactly. We're all at this point. All the night shift bandits have been on it. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We, we, we're we're a family right now. Yeah, we're we're a family of just podcasts and audio and just great people. So yeah. So just check us out. Uh, we'll be here, and we'll actually be back with you all next week for the finale. Indeed. Check you guys next week. Peace. Later. <laughs>